so uh so hi guys i'm kalyan and uh, i run two firms one is a managed services business model company into the space of influencer marketing and it's called social catalyzers and the other one is a company very recently launched called club tech it's been evaluated as one of the most powerful influencer marketing intelligence platforms in the world being currently rolled out in 22 countries and having the largest database and the largest intelligence design uh, in the space of influencer marketing. Uh, so with that, I'm going to quickly, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume a few things. Some of you may be new to influencer marketing. Uh, this presentation has a lot packed in that we're going to discuss. So I'm going to rush through a lot of things. Uh, we'll, we'll table some of, of your questions in the Q&A. And uh, I'll try and address as much as we can in this limited time that we have. Uh, very quickly, for those certain number of audience and people on each of those platforms, be it Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok, or even Twitter, and then uh, brands work with advocacy. So that's really the world of influencer marketing and the science and art of. There's a lot of influencer marketing that's been going on that could seriously look seriously look at some revisions and therefore here is the thing I wanted to start with by saying that paid media which is about content choosing any influencer marketing outreach in terms of cost per impression if you're aware of this which essentially i'm seeing cost per audience uh, on, on typically on facebook and google tends to that however as brands advocacy and virality and all those things happen when audiences choose that is influences come into the play where organically put forth content brand love for your or your uh, service so this is really it we're saying that look paid is a great and therefore you have a very uh, adjacent uh, effort from a marketing perspective that's why a couple of quick uh, 30,000 feet view comments I'm going to make First is that increasingly paid media is becoming something what you would call allergic, which is people are getting more and more used to seeing ads and therefore how to in their uh, and not only that, even the tech that's increasingly there is people globally. All of this is leading to why influencer marketing. The second thing is. Because once COVID, uh, brands could not shoot, could not do the and branded content and be making their TVCs and DVCs. And quickly they realized that I could content using content creators, which is influencers, or leaders, which is KOLs, synonymously in this particular presentation. And COVID became a big boost to say, hey, it's time to steal the march. Let's go and let's make content that would take into making it into influencer-led content. Again, another very uh, important Kalyan, is... Sorry to interrupt. Kalyan, breaking. can you please disable your webcam so that we can have bandwidth voice? Sure. Just a second. Is my screen? Yeah, your screen is visible. Yes, you can proceed, please. Great. So coming to the next point is who you you speak about organic conversations, the other two-way conversations. 
fought again in which is at their audiences but also uh, audiences being able to content creator and getting responses and that allows for a lot more engagement is of course all about video and how you, uh, one of the interesting facts is youtube is itself uh, is after google itself in fact but just to treat them separately uh, it literally is where most content is getting watched queried and seen and therefore the the, the importance of even youtube in this and video overall is pointing in that direction Therefore, what are the platforms that use for influencer marketing? Well, there are many geo platforms as well. Let's say you got Moj and Takatak and Josh and various countries. You have other SKUs. Look at it, and there's a, these very differently, which is you have and TikTok, YouTube, and uh, which are your influencer marketing platforms that would address approximately 90% of the global marketing spends on influencer marketing. Uh, the reason I bucketed them differently is also you can see one is the life and duration of content on Instagram or TikTok is a few days and the duration of the content is just let's say up to a minute. Uh, whereas the life of the content on Twitter is very short. Uh, it's very spiky. It's very tactical. It's instant buzz and instant death of the buzz as well. And YouTube is an interesting platform where not only is the content much longer, but the life of the content also tends to be quite long. For example, if you buy a big content creator, and suppose a video content creator on YouTube gets approximately a million views over a few months, the first half of those views will come in the initial few days, but the long tail of the video views could continue into the year, and that is a very there is more life and sustainability. Since, in fact. Uh, there is a very clear move on YouTube also from a perspective of the new upsurgence of uh, deep were looking at and uh, lastability and searchability and thus YouTube. Moving quickly on on to therefore what is influencer marketing 2.0? What does it need to be? Maybe we we saying that you know what if I'm trying to just build visibility and uh, those uh, typically agendas can be served by again a Google or a Facebook far more strongly than an influencer could. There are obviously outliers to uh, all such comments that I make. Marketing is never very finite and black and white. But having said that, if the, the premise of an influencer is not to just influence, then we're really uh, mixing way too many agendas and we're saying if. If an influencer's job is to really influence, which is to build advocacy, that depends on the influencer, and that credibility of the influencer needs a certain content design, just like you would design your ad and come and get into consumer in communication and then put it out. There's a certain amount of thinking that requires that is required. Yeah, influencers say something to convince audiences. So you can use set of behavioral science techniques. Uh, I'm not going to present that because it's very complicated and it's a longer version, but you can look at essentially what we're saying is you are engineering for credibility and you're engineering for engagement when you're using influencers. And when you keep that in mind, issues prop up very quickly. And this is what we have talked about, which is uh, rather we had mentioned we what is the hierarchy of influencer objectives? Are you Advocacy and depth, or just visibility? Are you visibility versus an influencer? And they're very different questions. Are you talking about emotional conversations or very because you want to sell a skin cream or you want to sell beauty or skin cream that allows you to, uh, you know, become fairer? Involvement of the product becomes very different from your emotional goals to uh, your rational ones. And that applies for all marketing communication, but here too, you can break it down. is a very nice subjective claim I'm going to make, which is if you had to draw an axis of credibility of an influencer versus the size of an influencer, 
barring a few outliers, you would normally see an inverse correlation, which means in, in, in a simpler terms is the bigger I am, as the less likely my followers are going to believe that I'm going to say something positive about a brand without my obviousness score as someone who really I'm seeing gets lower and lower, the bigger I get is all I'm this is therefore also the fact that a whole bunch of influencer marketing globally is moving to other influencers, which is a section of the focusedly on the micros who have some size. Our micro influencers are typically people from let's say 10,000 to 200,000 followers. I will explain that uh, in the next slide. But really, are you looking for reach versus credibility? These are all questions to ask in building our hierarchy of considerations to see which influencer, just by the dint of their size, is the appropriate one of usage of influencers. The next biggest problem, because influencer marketing, and so many people have been talking about it, and so many brands have been jumping into it, not everyone has been really thinking into the science of it, which has resulted in one of these things. In pretty much every market, 90% of the brands tend to work with the top. And what does that result? Fatigue and overuse of the same influencers. And just to give you a very exaggerated, exaggerated uh, example is uh, top influencers. As social catalyzers, we work in both Italy and Indonesia. Uh, a top influencer could be talking about Coca Cola and it could be talking about Panasonic on the next Friday, and then it, they could be talking about L'Oreal a couple of days later. So you see what's happening. You see the same influencer getting used to the, uh, the content being branded, and therefore, number that I would like to put here is typically gets about 50% of the engagement or numbers that he or she typically gets on an organic post that doesn't. Then you have all these other things. This uh, in, by a very famous, this is a very old one. I just picked up an example from very long time ago. The influence is literally holding on to a whole bunch of uh, talcum powder, but Really, the question is: Is this kind of influence? Is this influencer marketing? My argument would be not really. I mean, this is not just doing nothing for the brand. And also, the other consideration any brand managers is: influencer marketing is about the audience, and they like to listen to a certain kind of content. So it is about the influencer first, and their content first, and your brand insertion in some point later into the game than to just think about it as paid media, which is let's make the logo bigger or in a typical YouTube ad, you want to squeeze in your brand presence and communication in the first three to six, five seconds. That's not the way to approach uh, an influencer marketing content. So going back to that point, why are these micro influencers playing a bigger role? Who are these people? So one is lower fatigue is the next best thing because the smaller the influencers not being way too small either. This look like the next best thing to peer-to-peer -peer recommendation. Reach newer audiences, micro conversations, reaching people realistically. And technically, uh, if you evaluate it overall, the engagement rate as well of the smaller influencers tends to be higher than the bigger influencers simply because that's a scale and including, let's say, platforms like Instagram, the algorithm uh, a certain amount discoverable by the influencer. Uh, we'll show you some of this. So what, what are we saying here in influencer marketing 2.0? How can we be different? Try and marry the science of credibility design talked about and the need for the right kind of KPIs. And then moving on to some very interesting example. Just like you plan can you use therefore influencers to become and set up a cascade that gives you a very different outcome? What do we mean by that? If you break down the again, the bigger ones are the awareness drivers, the mid ones are your engagement drivers, 
And the really the people who I trust are your micros and nanos, who are the people who can say things about a brand. We've sort of given, these are global definitions, like uh, you have about one to 10K is a nano, 10K to 100K is a micro and so on. Uh, but at this sort of form very different roles. And this allows you to build a very different cascade. So if you're doing a big influencer campaign, you can choose that, look, I don't need too many mega influencers or even too many macros. Maybe I need three macros, a whole lot of micros and many, many nanos. And that can cascade a very differently designed reach from an influencer marketing perspective. Moving on, one should not just rely on the organic reach of an influencer because that tends to be very expensive, which is I pay a certain amount of money. Let's say I I pay, I pay uh, 100,000 rupees to an influencer with, let's say, uh, 100,000 followers. And you typically get a 3 to 5% engagement. The cost per engagement tends to be very high. But for very little more money, you could actually marry paid media thoughts behind the content of an influencer and amplify it and target it to their audiences. So there are techniques like either you do whitelisting, which is you do a paid partnership and take amplification rights, use paid media to target your audience on a particular platform. Or you even do content rights, which is to say, I'll take the entire video, post it on my branded timeline and target audiences. In either case, you're firing from those shoulders of an influencer's content versus making typically very brand-led, branded content. Um, then there are some very interesting How can we decide on our audience we choose an influencer. Typically, Disha Patani, let's say, and I've just taken an example, and she sits really well with an audience, uh, and a lot of female-oriented brands, let's say a lot of cosmetic brands would love to work with her, and of course, she would make for a great uh, brand ambassador, but the question here is, would she make for a great audience mapping thing? It's, and we can look at this later, but it's very likely, and it's not very likely. It is actually, there's specific Famous models, celebrities, females would likely to have more male audiences. The idea is to go into their eyes open. Maybe she could be actually be a very unlikely, uh, but a very great influencer. And many people in her profile and genre as could promote acts. But you know, you'll have to flip education to the audiences versus just the brand fit. See how, you know, you think about it from the conventional world of content creation or brand or TVCs or TVCs. Moving on, not other things that are there on platforms like Instagram, for example. These are all sorts of viral pages that talk about entertainment content, Bollywood, cricket, memes, all sorts of things. They're typically not an influencer. They're more like a content platform, but there are so many micro there are. Instagram pages, which get millions of audiences in each of them, and they engage heavily because these pages are like movie halls on steroids. Uh, we've actually done situation where on a particular case, uh, there was a lovely video by Pawns about girl power and lots of other community pages on Instagram that was uploaded. And as you can see, there was something very interesting done. We even uh, got the permission to do an edit content running an ad would not, which is watch till the end. And we did shout outs using pages to reach millions of audiences. So this is into consideration, not just influencers. If you're a very massy brand, maybe you could just use a whole lot of which is your audiences provided the audiences make sense. And now move the power of data that can Look, tech right now has been evaluated, as, like I was telling you, as the largest, most precise uh, influencer intelligence platform in the world. In the last three months or so, it's being rolled out in more than 22 countries and being adopted by brands globally. Things that it allows a, a brand and seeing what is it that it can do? It allows you to do something magical. It allows allows you to do is define your audiences, use the power 
selection of audiences, just like in conventional media, you choose, make your media choices. Time for the world to see and to, em to embrace the power of using based selection criteria for finding the right influences. And Club Tech has more than 210 million influencers database globally across three, which is Instagram, and YouTube. Let's get to the magic of what it is that it can do. And I want to continue checking if uh, see the dashboard page of Club Tech. Can someone confirm that to me? I'll assume that my screen. Uh, and I'm going to just. Yes, you uh, can see that. Okay. Thank you. So as you can see globally, Club Tech, and I'll just start disclosing what it does and how can you make a really, really, really refined and well-defined uh, influencer marketing choices and choice of influencers. So there are, you can see over here, there's 133 million Instagrammers data platform. Moving to YouTube, there is data for 7.5 million YouTube channels. And moving to TikTok, which is of course outside India, but I'm still sharing this because so many of you may be coming and joining in globally on this conversation. There are 86 million TikTokers data that we have on this platform. Just to show you what therefore you can do on this platform, imagine you're a marketer and you say, all right, I want influences from India. And you type India into the system and the system says, okay, it, we have, 7.8 million Instagram profiles on this platform that uh, have more than 1,000 followers. And, and you say, all right, what I want to do is, I want the influencer to be India, but I'm doing this camp to be more Bangalore centric. I'm picking a random, I'll pick any city, country, and I'll show you some fun examples. So back, the moment I put, so what we're doing here is we're saying, look, the influencer is your mouthpiece. Your audiences is what you're looking for. And your choice of influencer should be based on being able to define audiences as much as the influencer. The influencer could technically be from anywhere as long as the audience is where they are, is what you want and can choose. So to the power of sheer size of the database on this platform, you're able to see that there are at least influencer profiles or Instagram profiles that have at least 5% audience really move this up. You can say, okay, as a marketer, I need a bigger salience. How many influencers in India have at least 30% audience from Bangalore? And now we've moved, gotten number to 23,000. So the more pan India influencers stop, drop, start dropping off and the more locally relevant to Bangalore audiences start showing up. And this is the power. So I'm going to stay with this. Then you might say that, look, this is great, but I just, you know, this is going to be for an alcohol brand or a cigarette brand or whatever it is, your audience, you think somehow I want only male and female influencers out of that. Or let's say, let's go with male influencers. I want only male influencers. How many male influencers from uh, India have 30% audiences from Bangalore are males as influencers. That's 10,000 influencers. So you're able to see that, look, a lot of the famous ones will start dropping off. This is a SaaS model. So the numbers start dropping off for the big ones and the small ones start showing up. And you might say, okay, fine. That's the influencer. But I also want my the audience of the influencer to be male. And this automatically takes the default selection of 50%. There are 9,454 influencers who satisfy all this criteria, which is having at least 50% male audience. And you can increase that. You can say that, all right, this is a machine. It doesn't care how many times you make the request. You say, I want to find influencers who have at least seven and so on. And you are able to choose uh, your influencers. You still add 5,000 incredible influencer database that you can choose from. Then you might say, all right, since this is alcohol, I want the legal drinking age as a criteria. So I want the audience of the influencer as far as possible to be above 25. Unlike paid media, this is very organic. So you can only define a portion of the audiences. Okay. 
can I have at least 50% of the audience of this influencer to be uh, above 25? And you can even define the influencer age to be above 25. As you keep whittling down and funneling down using your business brand logic, you're able to find people. And then you might say, all right, this is great. Out of these 3,500 people, there are a bunch of categories you can find the influencer to be talking about any of these content buckets. And since we've been talking alcohol, so let's say, what about influencers who talk beer, wine, and spirits? In Bangalore, there are 352 influencers who have at least mentioned beer, wine, or spirits in their content at some point in time. And instantly you have, you can see their database. You can also choose the interest. You're saying that, you know what, but we're going to make a music content around it, around this uh, beer, wine, spirits thematic. Uh, so how about audiences who like music? So I want influencers who have audiences who like music. Apparently everybody likes music, so you can increase the representation to say, I want at least 25% of these 352 influencers their audiences to like music uh, or have actually actively spoken about it, and you're able to whittle down so this is the magic i'll show you some more very interesting things in terms of global trends that could be really interesting and this database allows you to discover all of that instantly what if you wanted to find sometimes it's very hard to find certain topics in india <coughs> um, you want to find a professional you say that i want to find a mixologist uh, people, so if you look for, uh, if you just type buy and beer and spirits, you might see a lot of people who talk, not a mixologist. Suppose you specifically want a professional or an amateur or an expert who in their bio has mentioned the word mixologist. In the system instantly, we're able to see there are 190. Similarly, you can, so the, 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 you know what a bio mention means and you can even, uh, you can say, I want to look for a hairstylist because I'm looking for a new brand that's, uh, I'm launching a new brand that's into styling. How many people? And you can really verify they're clicking the first one. The Instagram page is loading and you can see that this person has actually mentioned in their bio that they're a hairstylist. In fact, this person is a celebrity hairstylist. We really opens up, in fact, we were doing another demo the other day and someone says, can I find people who have mentioned that they are photographers from the market? Yeah, sure, just type it in, put your location. Like to, then you want to see some other things. Okay, I like an influencer. I like an influencer that's worked for me in the past, but I want more influencers like that person. So there's somebody called Kritika Kurana at that Bohogar. You can use the lookalike feature to generate who are the other influencers in the content. The moment I entered that Boho girl in influencer lookalike, instantly we picked all the keywords that she's been using, not all, a significant portion of the major keywords she's been talking about recently. Using that as a search parameter and expanding that, we were able to identify 40,000 other people who share similar content. And then you might say, hey, listen, but I only want female influencers. And there you go. Instantly, out of the 40,000, you're down to 29,000 people, influencers in India who share similar content. You can also map that influencer. So how about you give me other influencers who also have similar audience like that Boho girl. And imagine now we are able to identify 300 almost 288 influencers who share content like that boho girl who are female influencers who have content and audience like the boho girl moving on what just you can use this tool to really look at cultural inputs for example i want to know an influencer i am thinking of launching a soap in a k-pop k-beauty cosmetic brand okay for the heck of it can you possibly tell me how many influencers from South Korea have at least 5%? I'm going to type it and the number is going to boggle you to see what is the amount of uh, involvement of K-pop and K-culture into India. 
influencers from south korea at least 5% audience from india there are 47000 influencers from south korea on pages and i can even put the gender filter of saying i want male or female so that it removes pages there are 30000 influencers in south korea who have at least 5% audiences in india and you can actually again just like we did the last time you can push it up to say hey would it be possible to find influencers who have 20% audience in india actually the machine will tell you this there are 6000 profiles out there who could be able to tell you another powerful tool aspect on this is can i find who are the trending who are the growing influencers in india so out of the 7.8 million influencers how many of these influencers in the last three months have grown by let's say more than 150 percent their follower base and you'll be surprised that there are eight thousand influencers on a growth path who have grown by 150 percent and you can increase that number here all right number let's increase it to 200 percent there are 5,000 influencers. And then there is something very interesting. You might say, okay, but you know what? I don't have time to do my so many things. Can I find people whose email IDs and phone numbers are already available on the system? Out of those 5,000 odd people, phone numbers or email IDs for 2,400 people are already in the system and instantly downloadable as a report and usable by your teams, your managed services, Catalyzer or any other partner or your in-house team. Finally, I'd like to show you some things that you need to really, really watch out for. Out of 7.8 million influencers in India, only 630,000 influencers have at least 60% or more credible audiences. The remaining 40% of their audiences could or uh, inactive uh, or mass followers. We'll get into that very quickly. And if you put a filter of high and best, which is an 80% or more, imagine 8 million influencer database went down to 167,000 people who have at least 80% credible audiences. And the funny thing is, this is a very India thing in this case. If you put about Indonesia, the percentage is much higher in Indonesia. Uh, While well, the total database of Instagrammers is 6.9 million, a medium quality filter still gives you about 2.3 million, and a high filter of credible audiences, which is non, is still 1.3 million. Many, 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 many times of, of what's the case in India. So you can see the amount of of fake followers or mass followers or other uh, quality a big issue in a market like India. Uh, moving on. So you, you've been able to see that what kind of stuff you can do. If you're driving an affiliate model for your brand and you want to see in India, uh, how many of these influencers in India have a very high engagement rate? So typically in influencer marketing, the engagement rate is uh, a 3%. Out of all the 7.8 million influencers, 5.6 million influencers in India have 3% or more engagement rate. Therefore, when you have such a massive pool to choose from, if you're building a performance-led model, you might say, okay, fine. I want influencers who have 15% or more engagement. Immediately, you still have 15% people to choose from and so on. Uh, so this is the part of our influencer discovery. You can do all of these things on Instagram or YouTube. There are other features. Sometimes you say that, look, I'm looking for finance uh, influencers. So you type finance. The algorithm of Clubtech allows you to quickly build a word cloud of saying, these are the other high affinity words used by people who talk about finance. And using that logic very instantly, we're able to find influencers who talk about finance. And that's 2000. Many of our clients uh, who we've worked with have said, hey, listen, we want to look for YouTube who talk about finance and they work very hard to find 100 or 200 influencers in a particular country like India. We are able to generate thousands instantly and you can use multiple. You can use finance. You say, okay, I'm a new fintech brand or I, I want to talk about crypto. Uh, 
you can type crypto and instantly the all the other related words will populate and with that logic we're able to tell you how many people with what kind of followers and engagement talking about cryptocurrency in India. So that's really a quick primer. There's a lot you can play around with. You can search for all sorts of things. We have image and the, which is we can pick up pictures of a product or a brand or anything that you mentioned. So suppose I type. Uh, I, I, I can type just mini Cooper, uh, mini Cooper. Uh, and instantly for India. The platform will tell you how many influencers have mentioned Mini Cooper in their content. So suppose you, so for some reason, you're looking for influencers who talk about high-profile content, or you can actually find them instantly on this profile, on this platform. Quickly moving on and getting deeper into what else can I know? Once I've chosen an influencer, can I possibly know who they are? What are their audiences from? Where are the audiences from? Which city are they from? How many are male? How many are female? What is it? So once you've selected using discovery and found a set of influences that you like, and I'm going to take a, a, a random example. There's, there are many influencers doing great work, uh, but I'm just going to pick uh, an influencer. Let's say there's somebody called Kamlesh Rockman. He's been doing a lot of work. Uh, and we can see that he's been talking about Firebolt and Titan watches and so on. I mean, there are many brands. You'll be able to instantly see which are the brands he's worked with. And you can see that he's got one point almost six million followers, average views, what are the average likes, how many average comments, a very good engagement rate, 3.9%, almost 4%. Because Reels behaves differently on Instagram, we have created Reels to be a different uh, entity so you can look at it differently as now videos are going up and so it's just going to be reels on instagram you can see that kamlesh gets a very high in, uh, paid post performance which means in advance you can predict normally an influencer gets 50 percent of the engagement which i told you uh basis their organic post and uh, branded post they get 50 percent of the engagement but kamlesh in this case percent more engagement than his organic post, which means he must be spending money to boost it, to get more engagement, to get more likes, to show it to more audiences, which is a damn good thing. So you, you but you're able to predict in average that going with this influence, I'm going to get a good number. You can see how the audience has been growing for Kamli. You see how his engagement has been growing. Some of the key words that he's been talking about, he's been clearly working with Amazon and a couple of other things a lot. Influencers who share similar content, a ton of influencers, suppose Kamlesh, you can choose many of these search filter to find other lookalikes. You can see other influencers who have similar. What are the influencers brand affinities and the brands he talks about? What are the content buckets in which the influencer operates? Mostly, of course, he talks about a lot of things, but it is an interest here. You can see that their engagement is fairly high in the category of influencer base as a follower base. He has about one. Uh, he gets four percent engagement rate, where engagement rate for his category of size is a much lower. So he's, he's really looking good. And now comes the interest. Only twenty one percent of his audience is really credible. The rest of it is here is the breakdown. So you have 27% of his followers don't share, change their DPs or share content like human beings. They could be bots, they could be fake accounts. There's another aspect of fake accounts, which is called mass followers, people who follow more than 1500 accounts. These are people largely who follow other people to get followbacks. But when they don't get followback, you know that they are probably suspicious accounts and they're doing it for the money to build follower bases of influences. And you can see the real audience is just 17.5. And there's a small percentage of influencers as well, which is 0.54%. Kamlesh has 2.63% notable followers, which means people who are either celebrities, notable figures, blue tick profiles, or influencers, or even people with high credit, but at least 1,000 plus more followers. You're getting a sense of the quality. So this is actually a, not a bad. Now comes the fun. You can see, apart from 
which are the countries from which his audiences are from and some of these are question mark countries from the kind of content Kamlesh makes to the kind of audiences he has from other countries does raise questions of from Russia, Nigeria and so on uh, and you can see this granularity also with any influencer it would be great to see what cities are to where are the salient slides you see he's got audiences from Bhilwada and Delhi and Mumbai and suddenly you are able to see the numbers Look, tech is able to give you more data than Instagram through a power of AI and modeling and machine learning over the last three years, which is far more accurate than any other platform in the world right now and definitely more size. You can see the gender split of the audiences. You can see the age and gender cohorts. You can see what is the audience brand affinities. You can influencers are notable followers who follow uh, Kamlesh. You can see the brand affinities of the audience. What does the audience like? What do they like to, what are the brands they are talking about or engaging with on their timelines? You can also see the content buckets <coughs> of what is the salience of what kind of content by the uh, influencers audience. Excuse me, that was just some motor. This tool is able to give one, while the audience overall subscribers the people who actually engage with Kamlesh's content and there you at least have a much better news which is 7% of the audiences seem real there are 27% of the likes that he gets are from very big from notable profiles which I just explained which is their influencers or or, or celebrities or blue tick profiles you can see them by country because you're getting 6% there are other geographies which are being Highly represented. He only gets 41% of li uh, India and 42% of his likes come from India. Everything else comes from outside. So the idea is to go into any such considerations with your eyes open and you're able to see how the skews change. People who like a certain piece of content versus people who are in the typical audience, uh, uh, the genders can change, the age cohorts can change because this is only talking about people who like. No platform in the world will be able to tell you for an influencer and his audiences who are the people who engage with a particular influencer's content and where are they from and what are their things. This is all anonymized data. This is GDPR, 100% GDPR compliant. This is the power of modeling influencer does. You don't need to go outside this platform to look at the content of the influencer. Here are the top posts that you can quickly scroll through and see what it does for you. What is it we talking about? Which are the brands? He's been engaging here the sponsored posts and you can see 86k 84k likes 83k likes and he's got a very similar number in this case not so much recently but the older ones will have that and you're able to see that uh, you know it's working well and he's also been promoting uh, some of the alcohol brands which is great moving on of course the reels then comes we know when i'm doing an influencer marketing campaign so if I'm just going to type two uh, celebrities here, uh, and suppose I was going to use Deepika Padukone and Priyanka Chopra, uh, and you can add 20, 18 more names here. Uh, the tool is instantly able to model and tell you what is your unique audience. So out of 149 million influencers, that actually is the cumulative follower base of both of these, only 108 million, or rather, impressively, even 108 million are actually unique and you can do this for a whole bunch of influencers uh, then comes something very interesting you are a new brand you are a d2c brand you are any brand and you want to keep an eye on your competition i want to know what a particular influ what a particular brand has been doing in india in terms of influencer marketing can i tell you that this would have typically taken maybe a agency or a company with uh, five analysts and maybe twelve thousand dollars to come up with a report after a few days the club tech platform able to go and crawl real-time data over the last 90 days tell you how many influencers has a particular brand used so i'm going to just use uh, my nika as a example i click the button and instead of wait, waiting for so much money to be spent and other people give me a manual report, 
the system starts crawling real time to tell you what has a particular brand done and gives you a sharp grid tells you the top hashtags top mentions top sponsors it influences in the last 90 days have done 100 1340 posts they have been able to they have a total of 111 million followers with were able to get 3 million likes and 30 million views broken down into each category so there were 44 mega influencers 96 macro 362 micro and 347 nano instantly all the content is available and everything is downloadable uh, you can see the content by engagement by follower range you want to just see the mega influencers who worked on this nika campaigns or various brands which either involved nika or had the tag of nika and you can see the content instantly uh, and recent versus engagement you can just play with the content instantly you're able to out of data it's truly uh, and you can do this for any brand i just use nika for its example so uh in the interest of time, I'm going to start. We would like to move into the Q&A section because uh, there is a whole lot of things are packed in. I hope I've been able to show you the power of data. We started with some. If an influencer is supposed to influence, then what are you supposed to do and how is he supposed to do it? What are the strategic considerations in the hierarchy of influences? And right now, we were able to tell you that we can hold to the light any influencer or any brand and tell you everything about them using this tech platform about help you find influencers in millions across any geography or any country and find them with a brand which is more likely to succeed because we are using audience as a filter not just how the influencer looks or how many followers he or she has or how much engagement she has if the audience is not the rightly then it does not matter how many million followers an influencer has so with that i'm going to stop uh um and uh rana raj back to you uh to yeah we can solve some questions sure thank you thank you kalyan thanks for sharing this valuable platform i can see there are so many questions asked by participants so the first question is from pratish pratish is saying is it possible to target tire three and tire four regions uh, people from those regions absolutely uh, we can tire uh, I'll, I'll switch off my camera again just in the interest of speed and being able to demo some stuff to you guys uh, so you asked uh, tier 3 so yeah in can be from india and you say that look i want to type let me just do mirat i'm just typing mirat uh, influencers from india have at least 5% audience from mirat there's 10,000 people and you can increase that number and you can say, hey, I want at least 50% of his audience. And push it as much as you like. It will keep populating and you can see all the big influences are not there, just small influences relevant with that audience filter. So any town can be populated just like this. So short answer is yes. Uh, you can type Guwahati. I, let me just do it for you. Uh, yet very hard to find influences from. 90% of all the agencies that work not only in India but globally work with the top 20 30 cities in India it would actually be just the top six cities which would be Delhi four metros and you know and Bangalore and Pune and so on so yeah uh, I'm showing you instantly that there are at least 78,000 influencers 75,000 influencers who have at least 5% audiences from Guwahati and you can take that a percentage up to 65% or whatever and see where it lands and it will land somewhere that there you go next right uh, the second question is from penal uh, she's saying does this tool also allow to look insights that deep from youtube as well also for linkedin or fb facebook so only three platforms on this uh, platform which is instagram instagram youtube and tiktok and for india just instagram and youtube because from a tech solve perspective, we focused on that which that which would move the maximum needle. So even on YouTube, you can see. Uh, so, but of course, YouTube does not allow city-wise granularity, uh, uh, invasion of privacy. So, uh, but still, you can play a lot with content, location, location, 
industry, as you can see on both influencer and stuff. But there could be other interesting ways for you to find things you can do. Uh, so if, if if I look as if I type India, how many channels from India? And if I quickly show uh, and I do a gender filter of saying I want male or female, so you are now down to 233 followers. And suppose you wanted to go to Carrie Minati and you do analyze, which is the influencer discovery, you can see uh, a lot of things about his audience growth, content affinity, what is his engagement, what is his audience, where are they from, what are the gender split, but at a YouTube, I have to comply to the law of GDPR, and but we are able to give you some level of max granularity. Instagram is the most granular modelable data that we have, but we do have data and searchability features for uh, all platforms, just like we wanted to find uh, and I want to find finance led influencers in India. Um, um, and there you go. That because you might want to find channels. There's 1143. Our next question. Yeah, uh, the next question is from Pratish. He's saying, what is the accuracy of this data? So the accuracy of this data has been evaluated by our clients and modeled against real data. We claim to be 85% plus accurate, but we are sitting at 90% plus more accurate. And the next best platform in the world, I will not name them, would be off by at least anything between 15 to 23% uh, less accurate. So uh, this is the most accurate and the most largest sized platform in the world right now. Great. Uh, the next question is from. Sorry, yeah, you can proceed. Sorry, I I, I answered that. That's okay. okay. Next. The next question is from Anil. He's saying, what is the pricing to use Clog tool? So the pricing uh, level prices, they are institutional pricing. But let me explain how the pricing works. So if I pick, so this is a SaaS model, which is software as a service, which means you. You buy a certain number of tokens or credits. So, and the moment you try to download a report, it says, if you can see here, 0. 0.4 credits to download. If I type 25, that'll cost, sorry, 25, that'll cost you one full credit. One full credit can cost you anything between one to $3 basis your volume. So if you are a big institutional client, you'll be hovering more near $1. If you're a, if you're a, uh, if you're a mid-sized SME or smaller client that wants to try out, nonetheless, the pricing models are at least 30% cheaper than the world. That's not the value we bring. We bring more value on accuracy, but we don't want any from your perspective to, uh, from a pricing perspective, to hold you back. So yeah, you can take as less as 200 credits for a month, and you'd still be fine, and you could roll and, and roll out your campaigns. So how much it will cost? Let's say if we want to get 200 credits. Uh, it will cost you approximately uh, uh, in the zone of uh, 200 rupees a credit. In the zone, it's it's closer to, uh, yeah, about two and a half dollars per credit, which will allow, even if it's, assume it's 200, profiles uh, that's less than 10 rupees per profile these filters to find the right influences along with it if you put the contact detail as a filter as well so yeah next question yeah the next question is from Sid he's saying do you have the same data for Singapore influencers let me show you exactly that we by the way the short answer is yes but I'm just demonstrating it as possible so we have data for on instagram alone for 76000 influencers we were presenting it to three leading uh, two alcohol brands and two uh, one uh, leading global agency and they wanted the same thing because their global headquarters uh, content planning team was sitting out of singapore so they wanted to see yeah so there you go yes short answer yes right Fee range for paid collaboration in all categories. 
five. Can you repeat that question, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, Aditya is saying, what is the journal fee range for paid collaboration in all categories? Let's say we want to collaborate with any of the influencer. What is the average price uh, which we have to pay to them? What do you suggest? So this, there is a, uh, okay, so there is, uh, there is no answer for this because a small influencer will charge you 1,000 rupees, a big influencer will charge you 5 lakh rupees, a Kavi might charge you 3 crore rupees. Uh, so there is no, it depends on the size of the influencer. The second part of it is also many influencers who are smaller in size, let's say they have 100,000 followers, but a very nuanced set, which is let's say um, you're a finance, very real credible audiences, so you will tend to charge more. So size is not the only parameter, but the quality of audiences on a particular genre. So if you're a fitness enthusiast, enthusiast and you have a lot of fitness uh, oriented people who tend to buy a lot of expensive stuff, so influencers really decide their own pricing. There is no standardized model. In fact, in a particular genre of beauty and lifestyle, two influencers with almost the same 100,000 followers have charged, uh, one has charged, let's say, 15,000 and the other has charged uh, 45,000. Um, and this is what it is right now. It's not very structured. Each influencer decides what her worth is. And uh, hope to get in the Right. Harjinder is saying in whitelisting and amplification and acquiring content rights, which approach of paid media amplification is more effective? So uh, this again depends on your objectives. So first of all, only in the influencer world, which is to say, hey, influencers created content. I do the whitelisting. I do a paid partnership and I am amplified would be the best way because you still amplifying the influencers content from the influencers handle on the influencers page to the to audience influencers audience. So that stays in that zone of while it will come as a sponsor. It will be an influencers ad talking about your brand versus you doing a content rights because then you're posting it as a video on your platform and running it as an ad. Having said that, it's a very different kind of ad. And you might be noticing that a ton of the new wave of D2C brands that are talking about, you know, all these benefits and creams and all sorts of things. They're using a lot of influencer content and that's content rights. But it does appear like an ad because it'll be your handle of your brand, which will be showing it. But uh, but the last part of this is what I would submit to is how to data, which means you do a whitelisting, you do a small content rights, see which one perform better because what are you trying to achieve? Especially if you're trying to do performance, you want you can't do that through paid partnership because you want performance and you want a cost per click and you want to optimize the uh, funnel of conversion to add to cart to buy now to and so on. All of that you need to take in control. So you still use that content in move out. So I know this is a bit of a digression. That's marketing, but uh, the ballpark is deep. But if you're trying to do a lot more performance, uh, you might want to do both. But always bow to data. You may never know what may surprise you. Sometimes the worst career as a marketing head of certain firms uh, have outperformed the best creative that I thought looked the most aesthetic. So, next. Right. Uh, there's a question from Mahima. She's saying, can we make media planner for individual channels on YouTube and Insta platform? So there uh, segment on this I haven't there are many features and in, in the interest of time but the, the short answer is you could plan it because depending on your brand's objectives or your clients objectives you will uh, you will decide a, uh, kind of the influencer but this is exactly to find the influencers of the right size you can actually say fine from Singapore I want influencers but my client wants to only do micro influencers from uh, 10k to um, 100k. How many such influencers are there? So you have 5,000 in anything. Then you say, I will put it at male or female. And I want this interest to be around uh, shopping and retail. And you keep whittling down. And you've already defined your sizing. And you can pick those influencers. 
you can download that and then you will say hey listen i don't have time to figure out how to dm email ids and phone numbers or phone numbers uh, you, you can always drop the email id and say hey how many people i don't have time to right now so instantly you are able to make you choose the ones you want and you download and you good to go and you throw it over the fence to your the human partners of uh, running Right. Uh, there is a question from Karan, Vaughn, and Pratish. They both have similar questions, so I'm adding both. Uh, so yeah. Karan is saying, uh, how do we reach out to global influencers and pay them for the? And then once you're saying, can we directly collect influencers from this platform? So uh, we are building those features. What we have realized is direct collaboration on many platforms that have attempted to do this yields as low as conversion, which means if I use any machine to reach out to an influencer, uh, DM them and or 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 message them or WhatsApp them or outcall them, uh, they tend to not respond. Less than ten percent respond to a query. So the best. you just download their contact details call them whatsapp them message them and ask for them and they normally have so they share so for example i was talking about <clears throat> let's just go to um that boho i suppose you wanted to work with her you found her through the discovery platform you can see there are contact details uh, these are the ways she prefers to be contacted and her other social profiles you can email and then send the brief and close it the other reason why the system takes hard to collaborate because how do you close the payment and so on the payment part of it is still easy the problem is a client may want that i want that boho kritika to make and do three carousels and also so you could be either or of all of this uh and then you might say that i want to indoor shoot or a full production shoot and i want you to do three stories so there are so many and then you might want to do an edit ki i don't like the content the way you shot this video i want you to edit it any machine so the way this clip tech has been designed that that which requires human intervention is best left outside the platform because there are two way feedback loops that cannot be addressed this current stage of technology by anybody and many have done it and failed miserably because either you have quality or you have mass but you good influencers are just not available to respond to you through machine uh, outreaches what to be done there right uh, tanuj is saying after finalizing the influence uh, who decides the content strategy the agency or the influencer i believe it's the agency i mean uh, or, or or whoever is your in house team because it uh, the influencer will always take a brief there are various kinds of influencers so the, obviously the celebs and bigger influencers are very big. the smaller and mid sized influencers are far more flexible and malleable but either which way the most professional influencers are the ones who will uh, will ask for a very specific brief i want you to do this saying i want to do a makeup tutorial or i want you to do a before and after you give the video you give the instruction you be very precise as precise as your brief is is what but the agency will normally do it or your in house team it has to be a human intervention with the influencer and uh, that's how the content then effectively obviously your approval goes live uh, and the monetary terms are very different the big influencers are almost always 100% advance the mid size influencers are okay with a few days delay but most of the influencer marketing world is moving into pay in advance from an influencer's perspective and so it's it's a mixed bag out there but the short answer is the agency or your in house team takes over the briefing and the right outcome of content from an influencer yes sir uh, you thought he's saying best strategy for a new brand to get Uh, to do an influencer marketing to get the best ROI. Uh, that would be the same question for a new brand or an old brand, uh, and it would discover. Uh, sorry, it would depend really on 
what is it that you are really, really looking for? Uh, are you trying to build awareness at this stage? Are you trying to build, uh, are you build, uh, building for more uh, performance? Uh, do you want to do both? You'll have to run these tests even before you uh, you have to decide who your audiences are. So you, you have to sit back always as the marketeer that you are and say, here's my brand, here is my community, here are my audiences, the amount of money I have. I would as a marketeer make very different decisions if I had a crore of rupees versus five crores versus 50,000. Best strategy here is, and for a small brand, I would still give you an answer is define your audiences, pick the right kind of influencers, basis those audiences that you can define to find the right influences in the right geography with the highest possible engagement rate because you know they have and the highest possible audience credibility. Once you are able to find, then you run the test. Always start small, test out those outcomes that should look that I think by the right audience and the right engagement and the right audience credibility. I run a campaign, I ask them to do something, and I also, so the many things that the tool doesn't do that requires you to think as an influencer marketing, that's therefore an appropriate question for this uh, webinar is what are they going to say uh, to their audiences that will yield an outcome? And therefore, the traditional ways of A B testing your communication, A B testing your audiences as much as you possibly can, you word where all things are not always the same, but I would say start small. Pick the most likely influences to succeed by your audience choices. Uh, spend just the starting amount of money to see, am I getting those outcomes? Have I enabled actions that will yield? As a small brand, every brand, new brand, we always want sales. You just can't, don't have the luxury of awareness only. But you are at least getting your AOL advocacy influencer marketing strategy right. And the best way is to help data uh, validate outcomes that are your core objectives. I know this is a short loaded one, but that's the best I've got for you given this webinar. I hope that was useful. Yeah, Kalyan, I have so many questions. Uh, I'm sorry, but then I have exceeded the time. So let's take the last question, which is about, uh, do you provide demo account and how we can buy the paid subscription? Uh, yes, uh, you can uh, send a, uh, your requests to uh, B A I B H A at the rate club club K L U dot com. Um, we will have the send out. You, we can give you demo accounts. Uh, we approve it. It's not an automatic demo account. We, the request and the size of the client because we are focusing on that. Feel free to ping me DM. Because we're still building up our team. We are a bootstrap firm while we're having massively big conversations with the world's leading players and have converted quite a few deals. Still, uh, we're three and a half years old, but with a real team of three and a half years, uh, three and a half months of real existence. Sorry, five months of real existence. Uh, so, short answer is we will provide demo accounts to anybody who wants. So I can see there are questions from Nidhi, Tanuj. They are saying like we are not able to log in. And Nidhi is saying I have lie. So Nidhi, I, I would recommend you please connect uh, with Kalyan on LinkedIn or you can mail them uh, the email address which Kalyan has shared and then you can get reply from them. So you can't go and log in and hope to log in immediately. You sign up until we approve our demo account. Uh, there is no auto demo facility as of right now because uh, many business considerations that uh, allowing anyone to come and sign up at any point. So it's still a very B2B environment uh, where we are uh, approving it. Please reach out to me. I will do my utmost to uh, get you those demo accounts to play around with the platform. And the email ID again is vibhav at Clubclub.com, which is V A I B H A V at the rate K L U G K L U G dot com. Great.
so thank you kalyan i can see still we are getting questions <laughs> uh, jimmy george is saying which is a leading brand who has taken this service and then any specific use case share can we consider this question as a last question because we have taken oh, sure. up your time so there are many leading brands you know, the world's largest agencies are already rolling this out globally like i said in 22 countries by a largest i am not in a position to I many leading some of the let's say the number three most leading fashion e-com platform is rolling this out has already rolled this out uh, globally there are ton of other agencies now in terms of use cases it's very simple i just showed you the demo of what the tool can do for you a very simple use case is if i take titan as a client and i show you what is they have done in the last 90 days and out of that you look at the top three big is ripul juneja kamlesh rockman and there was another their real audiences credible audiences let me be specific were in the zone of 12 percent and 60 percent which means a lot of money went into a lot of good influencers who make great content who are great people but they have very low audience credibility either i would have paid less or i would have uh, chosen other influencers with better audience credibility which means the the simple a very verifiable data point uh, on day zero of employing this tool which platform which tech you've been using we can guarantee anything from 20 to 70 percent efficiency build on your existing influencer marketing campaigns and for that i don't know to do a use case you can go evaluate your own influences that you've worked with in the past and you will find the rooms for building far more efficient decisions using this tool simply because of the amount of data that resides here and audience data that resides here and the duplication data that resides here there are companies who are trying to build audience you're able to find uh, trending influences in any, any particular country in more than 200 countries uh, on this platform. So there is a massive database working very efficiently to give you real time outcomes uh, that is at the point at right now as we speak unparalleled. Great. Thank you, KK. Thanks a lot uh, for giving no. this valuable information about your platform. Even I'm also very much, I mean, <laughs> Uh, waiting for having the demo of this account to be very frank for our brand as well thanks a lot for giving your time in today's session so with this note guys i want to complete this session today and uh, i want to take back the access so with your permission uh, Leanne, can i take back the access from thank you so much thank you so many of you yeah. who hung around thank so you. really uh, look forward to seeing side of the digital laptop great thank, thank you, you. Uh, before closing this session start a poll about the experience of so i've started this poll on your computer screen i request everyone please share your experience about today's session So it will take you just one minute. Just click on the and let's complete. Thank you. So feedback from you guys. We invite uh, industry experts like Kalyan every month, and we do conduct uh, webinars uh, with the platform. So I want to have a feedback from you. Uh, about the next upcoming webinar which you want so i have uh, written down few topics uh, what do you think on which topic you want to have a webinar so please share your experience so that accordingly we can reach out to industry experts and webinars on these topics uh, in the next month Uh, so guys i have already uh, mentioned the email address in the chat box it's webhub at cloakcloak.com uh, i hope you have got it i can see there are still there are people who are asking me 
for the mail id so once uh, nidhi for the email address great i'm closing this poll and now guys i want to get the last of today is about our digital marketing training programs i hope you all know about digital vidya we are digital with every month like uh, we do conduct digital marketing training programs i'm sure most of you are already working in the file and uh, i just want to share my screen so that you can have a better idea about our training program so this is our website digitalvidya.com right if you see our website you'll find we conduct digital marketing training programs uh, which are open programs which anybody can join so regularly we do these sessions every month and batches like tuesday and thursday batches monday wednesday friday batches then saturday and sunday classes as well so if any one of you is interested to attend digital marketing training programs i request you uh, please share your feedback uh, our training program in all the digital marketing subjects like search engine optimization email marketing social media marketing web analytics so if you're interested to attend digital marketing training programs please share your experience on the webinar or, or the batch date which you think is appropriate or want to recommend someone about our training program you can ask them to visit our website digitalvidya.com where uh, they can understand more about our training programs and if they're interested to join they can join our training programs as well right so uh, i'm completing so with this note i'm closing this session once again i thank you uh, kalyan for giving this information about the platform which they have created it's a it's a wonderful platform and i'm sure i'm going to use this tool after completion of this session so i'm closing this session now guys uh, please visit our website digitalvidya.com on the resources section you can see we do webinars every month after this webinar uh, uh, we are launching new webinar by tomorrow so please do visit our website and then register for our upcoming webinar as well so once again thank you everyone thank you i'm closing this session now bye bye guys